guys, we're working with our friends at DraftKings, the official gaming partner of UFC, to put you at the center of the action with a shot at millions of dollars in total prizes. Download DraftKings and enter the UFC 262 Daily Fantasy Contest with millions of dollars in total prizes up for grabs all week long. Here's how to play. Draft six fighters from Saturday's card. Stay below the $50,000 salary cap and rack up fantasy points for advances, takedowns, knockdowns for full rules and scoring. Go to DraftKings.com MMA. I'm picking Michael Chandler in the main event. And guys, if you're a new user, go to DKNG.co slash Sunnen and use the promo code Sunnen when signing up to get a shot at millions of dollars in total prizes. My official prediction for Chandler versus Oliveira, guys, I am taking Chandler. And I've got to tell you, you want to know something? This isn't going to be a close fight. Now, I could be wrong, and it's not Chandler. But if I'm wrong, I'm going to be really wrong. One of these two is going to kick the other two's ass. They're just, they're, they're two different of styles. They're two different of styles to go out there and start changing rounds. If Chandler comes out and he takes charge, it's going to be very hard to stop him. And that's what I'm banking on. I believe Chandler is going to come out and he's going to take charge. Chandler is extremely powerful. People forget that. They remember that he was a couple-time All-American wrestler from Missouri. They're expecting him to wrestle. He seldomly does. He generally comes out there, mixes it up, but lands some big shots. What people do miss is how damn powerful he is. Now, Oliveira's got something else on his side, too, which is Oliveira can mix it up so well and keep you guessing, and he's got a gas tank. you got to have a gas tank to, to stay in there with Chandler. I think that these are two great options to fight for the belt, but let's come back to that because neither of them's the right one. Neither one of these guys is fighting with the great glory and looking forward to being champion. In comparison to becoming the guy that possibly gets to fight Connor next. We've never seen a title fight like this in history. It has been openly disclosed to us and told to us in no uncertain terms that the number one contender at 155 pounds is Dustin Poirier, but that Dustin elected to not go into a championship fight, but instead to a trilogy with Connor. We've never had that happen before. So we now know that two afterthoughts are going to be fighting for the belt. Now, before you think I'm insulting these guys, these guys are okay with it. They understand how this opportunity came. They plan to make the most of it, and they both would like to draw into the winner of Poirier versus Connor, of which they will, but they would both like for that to be Connor. Look, red panty night is still a real thing. And what I'm speaking to, I'm not trying to put these guys down in the least. What I'm speaking to is they have a built-in motivation. They have an extra incentive. Anybody else who's ever fought for a world title in the history of ever is fighting to get that belt and put around their waist and to have that glorious moment to get those pictures, to get that for the mantle, to have something to brag to their kids and their grandkids about. These two are essentially fighting for a number one contendership in many ways. In many ways, even Chandler has been open to speaking about, I sure hope Connor wins. I'd like to defend and go in and fight Connor because Panty Nights is still a deal, guys. It's still a real thing. Dustin Poirier himself was given the opportunity to fight for the belt. It won't be against Connor or to fight Connor, but it won't be for the belt. You saw which one he chose. It's very interesting if you look at it from that perspective. They have a built-in motivation. They have a whole different incentive. They don't just have the incentive of the championship and the points and all the money and stardom and great things that come with that. They then get to go into, with a little luck from Connor, that fight. And that's the one that they're really excited and looking for. And none of this is a knock on anybody. I'm telling you the story as it's happening. There's a bit of a compliment here. There is a compliment that still goes to Connor. That's true. Now, figure out if you think Connor can get over on Dustin, right? But that's a conversation for another day. I'm just talking about the motivations. I'm talking about the motivations that they have both, Charlie Olives and Michael Chandler, have spoke about as recently as this week. I have heard Chandler say more things. This is me. I'm not saying he said more things. I'm saying I've heard him say more things about Connor McGregor than I've heard him say about Charles Oliveira this week. And of course, for Chandler to get to Connor, it would mean that he got through Oliver, so it would be a byproduct. And sure, Chandler's bringing the belt, but he's not looking at just to take on the winner of Dustin and Connor. He realizes that's what he's going to have to do, but he's hoping that that's Connor because Red Panty Night is still a real thing. There's a real compliment here for Connor McGregor. 
There's a compliment for Conor McGregor that Dustin Poirier was offered a world title or McGregor and said McGregor. It's really interesting when you look at it from this perspective. And if you guys are going to go and try to break this fight down, you want to handicap it or you want to bet snacks with somebody at work, something along these lines, don't go and study their entire careers. Because you're going to decide that Oliveira doesn't belong in there with him, right? Oliveira is good as he is, but you're going to decide he doesn't belong in there and he's not near as good as Chandler. That's just going to be some wins and losses. But if you go back and you look a little bit closer, or if you came along the journey like I did and watched it at the time, you will realize that Oliveira lost a couple of fights he shouldn't have lost. And Oliveira was going down to 145 that was just simply too low. He had, he had weight issues. There was just a few things that happened before he matured and really got into his stride. I would encourage you to just go back and watch la both of their last fights. Because as short as Chandler's night was, he still showed this explosiveness and he still showed his ability to command respect and to come across that ring. And that's a big deal. If you respect Chandler, you're going to have a hard time beating him. And I don't mean mentally. I don't mean as, as a gentleman. If you walk out and you're hesitant, if he stands his ground and he comes forward and you circle left or you circle right, you're going to have problems. You're not going to outthink him and outstrategize him. And I, and I have a feeling that any coach in the world is going to look at that and tell you, circle left or circle right, they're wrong. You've got to go forward. You've got to bully him. And it's hard to do because he's strong. It's hard to bully and make somebody quit when they're in as good a shape and they're as a good a competitor as Michael Chandler. It's hard to beat Michael Chandler. I got it. If you're going to do it, you got to stand your ground right away. Second one. So we got to know first if, if Oliveira is going to do that, but we're going to see it pretty quickly. And if you go and watch Oliveira's last fight with Tony, that's where you're going to see, first off, this guy's a gas tank, okay? Oliveira's never really weaponized pace. Pacing's never been a problem for him, but he's never weaponized it quite like he did with Tony. He not only out-wrestled Tony, out-punched Tony, out-grappled Tony, he outpaced him. I can't say that ever before. I can't say anybody that's ever done that. So we've actually found a way to turn pacing into a, we a weapon. And he looked so good on the ground, but he kept you guessing. Is he going to pound? Is he going to stretch? Is he going to take you down? Is he going to punch? Is he going to elbow? Is he going to knee? He kept you guessing, even as the outsider. I'm the viewer. I can see everything. I can see everything way better than Tony can see it. He fooled me. Oh, he's looking to strike. Boom, he drops down to a double. Oh, he's coming for a double. Boom, he comes up with the elbow. Boom, he comes over the top of the nether elbow. I mean, it's one of these things where he kept us guessing to a very high level, which is why I really don't know what's going to happen in this fight. There are two different of fighters for this to be tit for tat. Somebody's going to kick somebody's ass. I got to pick someone. I mean, it's down to that. It's, it, it's that close and it's that much of a pick em fight. Is that same Oliveira going to show up? We know the same Chandler will. Chandler's just very consistent, but Oliveira has been very consistent for three years. I think we need to give him a little due as well. I am going with Chandler.